Hey guys, Mark here, and this is the Razer Opus. This is the first pair of headphones from Razer that doesn't look like it belongs next to an RGB gaming PC, and I'm glad they're branching out and trying new things, but is it working for them? Let's talk about that. The design is definitely interesting. Razer is well known as a gaming brand, but the Opus is a lot more subdued than their other products. Instead of the usual tri-headed snake, we get a slightly more tasteful bit of Razer branding along the side. The colorway I chose is midnight blue, and at first I wasn't really sure about it, but I think it's growing on me. They do have a plain black version if you're into that though. The build quality of this headset doesn't really impress me. It's mostly plastic, which is totally fine, but there's something about the feel of this plastic that just feels cheap. They do fold down to fit into this really nice faux leather case though. One thing I really like about the Opus is how comfortable it is. Both the ear cups and the headband are very soft and comfortable, and I have no problem wearing these for long periods of time. The only downside is that the cups are a little small, and people with bigger ears might have trouble fitting them inside the pads. The Opus adopts a similar control layout as the XM3s as well, with a dedicated noise cancelling button, power button, and a Type-C port on the left side. Unlike the XM3s though, the Opus does not have any form of touch control pad, and instead uses these physical buttons on the right ear cup. I'm fine with this as I don't really like the controls on the XM3s anyway, and using these buttons to control volume is more intuitive overall. The center button is a multifunction button, and pressing it can do several things from skipping songs to accepting or rejecting calls, or activating the assistant built into your phone. All right, so that's the design of these headphones, and for the next part of this review, I'm going to do something a little bit different. I asked you guys what you'd like to know about the Razer Opus on my community page, and I got a lot of questions, so I'm going to do my best to answer them, and hopefully that'll be a good representation of what everyone wants to know about this headset. If you end up liking this kind of review, maybe drop a like and let me know in the comments down below. First, let me just address some of these comfort questions. Like I mentioned, the Opus is a very comfortable headset, and I'd even go as far as to say that it's more comfortable than both the Surface Headphones 2 and the Sony XM3s. The soft ear pads and headband really makes a big difference, and the clamp force is low overall, so they don't feel like they're digging into my head. Your mileage is gonna vary, of course. Our head sizes and shapes are going to be different from person to person. I've had no problem with using them with my glasses on, but they will make a better passive cancellation seal with your glasses taken off. And that's probably a good segue into noise cancelling performance, and I got a lot of questions on that. I'm not sure if I can pronounce your first name correctly, so Mr. Amazon asks if there's any sort of humming or buzzing with the active noise cancellation. Yes. To be honest, I found these headphones to produce a fairly significant amount of white noise when the active noise cancellation is on, more than the Surface Headphones 2 or Sony XM3s, which is pretty unfortunate. David asks how the active noise cancellation compares to other headphones. Well, I sat down last night and I did a bunch of different tests between these, the XM3s, and the Surface Headphones 2, and what I found is that they're uh, very close to the performance of the Surface headphones, but they aren't as good as the XM3s. I immediately ruled the XM3s as the winner in terms of noise cancelling, but I had to switch back and forth between the Surfaces and the Opus repeatedly for like half an hour, but both of them are about the same. There's more white noise present in the Opus headphones though. Something that you guys didn't really ask about but I thought was worth mentioning was the ambient sound mode on this headset. Like other headsets, you can press the button to activate the microphones and take in sound from all around you. But there's a catch. You have to hold the button down on this headset. As soon as you take your finger off of that button, the noise cancellation will immediately kick back in, and as far as I can tell, there's no way to change that. Back to the questions, it's call quality time. The Opus has some okay microphones. They're better than the XM3s and maybe a little worse than the Surface headphones too. Even though that they are Razer headphones, they really aren't up to snuff with gaming headsets, which is fine because this really isn't a gaming headset. A lot of you guys asked about that too. In terms of latency for things like gaming, they're fine. They're not gonna be as good as a wired set of headphones, but they're about on par with the other Bluetooth headsets I own. I didn't notice any sort of latency issues when watching movies, but when I fired up a game of Warzone on my gaming PC, I noticed a very slight amount of latency from when I left click to fire and when I heard the shot. Just a fraction of a second, but enough to notice. The other thing I wasn't happy about with regards to Bluetooth is the fact that there's no multi-point Bluetooth support whatsoever. Every time you want to switch devices, you have to repair the headset by turning them off and holding the power button down to activate the pairing mode. 
The Razer Opus has some THX branding on the ear cups and all over the box, claiming that they're THX certified for high quality sound, and some of you guys asked about that too. I can't find any mention of any surround sound virtualization literally anywhere, but here's what I'll say about the THX branding. Razer acquired the THX company back in 2016, and they officially own the brand now, so I think this is just Razer's way of trying to upsell you on the audio quality. I do, however, think that watching movies and TV shows might actually be the best use case of this headset, and I'll get into that in a sec when we get to some sound quality questions. Battery life is another area that I don't think I got any questions on, but Razer is claiming a solid 25 hours here, and I think that's actually pretty accurate. You will get a little less when using active noise cancellation though, so keep that in mind. They charge quickly via USB Type-C, which is nice, and a Type-C cable, 3.5 millimeter cable, and airplane headphone adapter are all included inside the carrying case. All right, sound quality time. This one's for you, Lucas. The Razer Opus has a great sound profile overall, but they aren't gonna be for people who would like to listen to a lot of hip hop or any kind of music that has a real punchy low end because these headphones are on the flatter side of things. One thing I noticed right off the bat is that they don't get all that loud. For me, the headphones are only as loud as I like them to be at about 90% of their max volume. 90% of the max volume on the XM3s would literally deafen me. The headphones are very accurate though, and I kind of buy the whole THX certified for high fidelity sound thing. They're great for watching movies and surprisingly good for editing my YouTube videos where I need a more flat and accurate sound signature. But this is weird, right? Am I the only one that finds this weird? This is coming from Razer, a company that specializes in gaming headphones with deep, explosive, over-exaggerated bass. So I was kind of expecting the same thing here, but these headphones aren't like that at all. They produce very crisp highs and mids, although I find the low end doesn't have quite as much of a punch to it like I mentioned earlier. The Razer app has a place where you can flick through a few different EQ presets, but even with the enhanced bass preset, you still don't get the deep, punchy bass that are found on the X. M3s. You also can't create your own custom preset, which is a bummer. They do support aptX for lower latency, but I don't see any support for things like LDAC, ALAC, or any other lossless or low compression codecs. So overall, I have kind of mixed feelings about the Razer Opus. I think the price is decent at 200 bucks, but given that an extra $50 would get you a pair of Surface headphones too with these awesome rotating dials for controlling audio, better microphone quality, multi-point Bluetooth support, and a more punchy low end, I think you might be better off saving up just a little bit more money and going with these. I'm not saying the Opus is a bad pair of headphones. Let me just be clear here. I just think that there are better options out there if you're willing to spend just a little bit more money. If you have any more questions, Questions that you want to answer about these, leave them in a comment down below and I'll do my best to answer them as they come in. That's it for me though guys, if you like this video please give it a like and subscribe to support my channel and as always, have a great day.